Hey guys, it's Sasha. This week, OpenAI asked the US government for a bailout. Now that they have run out of money again, OpenAI want the US government to give them money. Now, just a few days ago, OpenAI promised to pay AMD $100 billion. They also promised to pay Nvidia $200 billion, and they said they would pay Oracle another $300 billion. But then, Microsoft went and published their Q3 results. And the truth is, Nobody really cared that much about Microsoft's results. I mean, the company's doing fine, it's steady, they make a lot of money. But if you go and look at Microsoft's latest 10Q form, on page 11, it has this footnote here that says, for the three months ended September 30th, 2025 and 2024, other income or expense net included 4.1 billion and 688 million respectively of net losses from investments in open AI. Primarily net recognized losses on our equity method investment reflected in other net. So in the most recent quarter, open AI lost Microsoft $4.1 billion. Microsoft lost that much on their investment in OpenAI. And on the Microsoft's website, you can see this update from a few days ago, which says, excluding the impact of OpenAI's recent funding rounds, Microsoft held a 32.5% stake on an as-converted basis in the OpenAI for profit. So in October, OpenAI raised another $6.6 .6 billion, which diluted Microsoft shareholding slightly. But even ignoring that, the 30 32.5% stake in OpenAI would mean that if Microsoft lost 4.1 billion in Q3, it means OpenAI lost like three times as much because Microsoft only owns one third of OpenAI and therefore they take one third of the hit that OpenAI takes. So from this, you can deduce that OpenAI lost around $12.6 billion in the most recent quarter. But investors are queuing around the block to give OpenAI more money. And this is the same for most other popular tech stocks at the moment. Retail investors are tripping over each other, buying up these stocks with insane valuations because it's the future, bro. According to retail investors and populist analysts, these companies are all undervalued. But at the same time, Wall Street is looking at this frenzy from the sidelines, marking all of these companies as severely overvalued. This tool, by the way, is Investing Pro by investing.com who have kindly sponsored this video and I've actually found this tool really useful recently because when pretty much every stock in the stock market is so expensive it is really hard to know where to put your money and check this out let's say you come across a company called Globus Medical and that's a company that I have been investing recently but maybe you've never heard of GMED and don't know anything about the company well you can look up all of that company's data in this tool and you can access these amazing detailed reports that are really handy. It would take me hours, maybe days to get all of this information together before now there's pages and pages of useful data just from one click. And if you're not sure which companies to look at, you can sort and filter stocks by theme, by industry, by strategy or whatever you want. Here is a list of stocks that could be undervalued for example. It's full of companies that have low multiples, you have probably never heard of most of them, which have a particularly low valuation at the moment and you can go and read up about each one to see what you think. Investing Pro is on sale right now. You can get up to 55% off with the early Black Friday deal. But if you click on my link in the description or in the pinned comment, you get another 15% off on top of that Black Friday discount. You'll see the discount right here when you click through because it'll say Sasha. It's a great deal. You're getting a lot of value for your money. So make sure you don't miss out. Click on that link, save yourself a lot of time and money. So OpenAI is losing over $12 billion a quarter at the moment, and that number is rising very quickly. And they are by far the most popular chatbot out there. So the others will not be doing too well either because they're not bringing in any revenue. And remember that by far the biggest cost is not even included in OpenAI's profit and loss statement because by far the biggest cost is purchasing graphics cards from Nvidia. And according to my sources, OpenAI adds about five giga shit tons of graphics cards per quarter. But OpenAI is very clever about the accounting because they don't just go and spend their own money, <laughs> not their own money, their investors' money on these cards. You see, if you had to burn your own money, you would have to spend 
a lot of money on capital expenditures. And although capital expenditures do not show up on your profit and loss statement, they are still real dollars being burnt. You have to raise them and you do have to show them in other disclosures, like in the cash flow statement. So OpenAI relies on companies like Microsoft to burn the capital expenditures because they can bury it within their overall business by buying all of those graphics cards into their Azure data centers. And OpenAI then licenses these, essentially pays to rent them. And if you go and look at Microsoft's accounts, you can see that they have just burned $19.4 billion on property and equipment. And you might be wondering, well, what sort of property and equipment is this? What are they investing in? Maybe they are building some kind of new offices, maybe investing in machinery, research and development facilities. Well, the easiest way to figure it out is by looking at the cash flow statement, because here you can see the depreciation, amortization, and other is at 13 billion in the last quarter. But it's not even the amount that's important. It's the the fact that it is almost double what it was a year ago. But wait, it just gets worse because if you dig a bit deeper into the 10Q, you find this, note six, property and equipment. And look, total at cost amount was 329.7 billion at the end of the most recent quarter, which is $31 billion more than in the previous quarter. Almost all of that increase has come from buildings and servers, basically building out AI data centers. But wait, this thing says that they spent over $30 billion, $31 billion on property, plant and equipment, but the cash flow statement says they only spent $19 billion. So where did the extra $12 billion come from? Well, just like OpenAI passed their capital expenditure spending over to Microsoft, Microsoft does exactly the same thing with their financing partners. So the reality is that in the last quarter, Microsoft managed to incinerate in real terms $31 billion on graphics cards and places to put those graphics cards. And it's fascinating because this $31 billion is not included in the profit and loss statement because it's classified as a long-term investment. But while Microsoft burned $31 billion on new graphics cards and data centers in three months, their net income in that same quarter was $27.7 billion. Hmm. And what about the other big tech companies? What's happening over there? Well, Amazon's purchases of property and equipment has blown up to over $35 billion in the last quarter. So Amazon is also balls deep in graphics cards and they spent twice as much on graphics cards in the last quarter as the amount of profit in total that they made. Google has almost doubled their capital expenditure spending to $63.6 billion so far this year. That's about two thirds of all of their profit. Facebook more than doubled their spending on graphics cards as well in the most recent quarter to $18.8 billion, way, way more than their total profit. You can look at any of the big tech companies you want and you will see the same pattern. It's kind of weird. The spending on property and equipment is blowing up at levels like we have never ever seen before. These companies are burning more money on this new CapEx for AI than they actually make in profit. And we are now slowly beginning to see this appear in depreciation because every quarter that spending is increasing way more quickly than their profits. This line right here, the depreciation and amortization line is the smoking gun of what is happening in the AI bubble. Not long ago, I would not pay really any attention to depreciation for these large tech companies because it was immaterial. It was irrelevant. It was a relatively unimportant line in the account. Now, it's suddenly jumped to being 50% of the profits and it's growing at like over 100% a year. The thing with depreciation is that once you start the treadmill, once you start depreciating the assets, you just have to keep on going. Month after month, quarter after quarter, year after year, it just keeps coming out of your account. So far, none of that investment is actually making any money for the companies because none of the AI chatbots have figured out how to actually make a profit. OpenAI spends several times their revenue on their costs and that spending is going up faster than their revenue is going up. So it's just getting worse. The market for people wanting to pay a, even a $20, let alone a $200 or a $2,000 monthly subscription for ChatGPT, that market is limited. Your average person, I know it's difficult when you're surrounded by tech bros, but your average person is just not going to pay that that at the moment. Your dad who is 65, who's sitting there at home, he is not going to pay for it. And if ChatGPT suddenly has ads inserted, 
the user experience will immediately become so awful that customers on the free version of ChatGPT will just start hating it before they even have a chance of converting to a paid customer. So going back to where we started, on October 27th, OpenAI posted this mumbo jumbo of a document. It's 11 pages long and most of it is just nauseating, but the thing that people paid attention to was this last paragraph at the very end. The government faces a growing deficit in GPU capacity across its classified cloud environments, constraining the nation's ability to deploy AI at speed and scale for critical national security Missions. OpenAI proposes a classified Stargate initiative to help meet this need, mobilizing private capital alongside government partners to establish accredited classified data centers purpose-built for a government AI, whatever that means. Generally, the whole document kind of reads like OpenAI asking the government for help. Please build us a load of energy production. Please go and put all those plants out there so we can use them. Please build all the infrastructure. Please build all of the data centers so we can use them. And then a few days later, OpenAI's chief financial officer, Sarah Fryer, said that OpenAI wants the government to put a backstop to its huge debt. They want to guarantee it. Basically, they want the US government to guarantee the money to the lenders because OpenAI is so important. It's too big to fail, right? What would we do without ChatGPT? Well, after everyone turned around and told OpenAI that maybe they just can kindly go and fuck off, Sam Altman went to Twitter. And of course, while trying to make it better, he just made it worse. He said, I would like to clarify a few things. First, the obvious one, we do not have or want government guarantees for open AI data centers. And then if you scroll down, he says, the one area where we have discussed loan guarantees is as part of supporting the build out of semiconductor fabs in the US, where we and other companies have responded to the government's call and where we would be happy to help, though we did not formally apply. So it's a bit confusing. I am confused. Is he at the beginning trying to say that, you know, OpenAI do not want US government money or do they actually want it? Which one is it? Then he tries to mitigate his CFO's comments. Our CFO talked about government financing yesterday and then later clarified her point, underscoring that she could have phrased things more clearly. And then he says, Tyler Cohen asked me a few weeks ago about the federal government becoming the insurer of last resort for AI. In the sense of risks, like nuclear power, <laughs> obviously the same thing, not about overbuild. I said, I do think the government ends up as the insurer of last resort, but I think I mean that in a different way than you mean that. And I don't expect them to actually be writing the policies in the way that maybe they do for nuclear. So basically he said that, no, OpenAI do not want government guarantees. No, 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 no. They just want the US government to, you know, give them a load of money, pay for everything and ensure that their loans are good, which is totally not the same thing, duh. And then once again, after everyone read this and pointed out to Sam Altman that he is full of shit, he had to try to undo the statement he just made to undo the statement that his CFO made to undo the statement that OpenAI published. And then he wrote, to the degree the government wants to do something to help ensure a domestic supply chain, great. This is part of a national policy that makes sense to me, but that's super different than loan guarantees to OpenAI, and we hope that's clear. So it's kind of like, hey, we, we, we're not asking, but if you could, it would still be nice if you just build all the stuff for us. Very clear. It could not be more clear that we are now in the stage of the bubble where the companies losing vast amounts of money have come to the US government with a begging bowl. Remember, Investing Pro is on sale right now. You can get up to 55% off with that early Black Friday deal. And if you click the link in the description or in the pinned comment, you get another 15% my personal discount on top of that. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you later.